Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. You know, most of us in this community are probably familiar with colloidal silver, but we also are pretty familiar that silver is pretty much found everywhere. Really, the same thing is for gold. Part of the problem is extracting it from the natural environment. That is what poses a real problem. And so this particular article here was sent to me by Cyber Curtain Twitcher on the effects of silver in water. And by the way, he's got a filter that does the same thing. Pretty cool. So let's explore this. Disinfection. The effects of silver on water. Yes, this uh, is an article that was written quite some time ago, actually, uh, in 2010. Silver occurs naturally in the environment, mainly in the form of its very insoluble and immobile oxides, sulfides, and some salts. And, you know, um, there are ways to uh, find silver in the natural environment, but it's very difficult really to find actual nuggets. And there's actually a very rare type of, uh, of silver mineral that occurs in strands, kind of like string. It's kind of crazy, wild looking. But if you find those, those are worth well much more than the spot price for silver for sure. Silver occurs naturally in the vi- environment, mainly in the form of its very insoluble and immobile oxides, sulfides, and some salts. Because silver ions are bacterialist, bacteriostatic, silver is used both as an emergency drinking water disinfectant and impregnated in some water filters to prevent microbial regrowth. That's right. So there are ways, I guess, you can at birth control it to prevent it from happening. But in this case, you want it to be impregnated in some water filters to prevent micro- microbial regrowth. And that's what the CCT has. Maybe I should look into this too. Silver has been used in the United States for water disinfection since the 1950s. And numerous commercial water filters uh, using silver are currently being marketed today. Household filter systems using ceramic filters coated with the antibacterial agent colloidal silver have been shown to be effective in eliminating bacteria and contaminated household water in various locations around the world. In particular, positive results for low-cost filter technology being used in flood-plown areas of Southeast Asia were recently noted in an International Development Enterprises report on filter technology trials to the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Now, I'm going to look in here into the antibacterial capability. The specific antibacterial mechanism of silver is not clearly understood. But while research with E. coli and SRS have uh, shown that silver treatment of these microorganisms has resulted in DNA losing its replication ability, research on drinking water disinfection systems has shown that silver can be used successfully to control bacterial growth. It has also been found that the addition of copper and silver to water systems may allow the concentration of free chlorine to be reduced while providing comparable sanitary quality of the water. So who says that we can't use 90% silver um, even in uh, the systems for, you know, some Mazak coin silver? Are they going to use... 10% 10% copper and 90, 90% silver. Of course, I kid there, but yeah, there's a some term there. But anyway, still, other research has shown that silver can be used in hospital water systems to control Legionella and in cooling towers to control bacterial growth. Silver has also been used to enhance the infect- effectiveness of ultraviolet radiation in inactivating viruses in water. Now, part of my concern with colloidal silver, and I've got some, but I don't don't take it regularly, is because I'm concerned that it may actually um, uh, kill some of the good bacteria because you also need good bacteria in your guts um, as well. So that is one of the things that uh, concerns me a little bit about ingesting too much colloidal silver. 
Many commercial POU water filters make use of silver impregnated activated carbon to remove contaminants in household water supplies. Bacteria can multiply on carbon media that does not contain silver and subsequently be released into the water supply. Silver impregnation prevents contamination of the active carbon filter and provides additional bacterial of bactericidal effects. Interesting, okay. So the health concerns uh, are the other part here. The World Health Organization's WHO guidelines for drinking water quality indicate that there are no adequate data with which to derive a health-based value for silver and drinking water. But we know it's there. We know it's true. They have been using silver. There's there's a uh, an old wives' tale about you know putting a um, a silver dollar in a quart of milk uh, to prevent it from uh, spoiling. And um, you know the silver has a long history of medicinal uses. So it's kind of interesting that the World Health Organization's uh, that there's not data to derive a health-based value for silver and drinking water, but I would think it would be there. Um, that does perplex me a bit. The guidelines state that where silver salts are used and maintain the bac- bacteriological quality of drinking water, levels of silver up to 0.1 milligram per liter can be tolerated without risk to health. And maybe that is alluding to uh, the potential that silver could be used um in a sense, to kill the good bacteria that we need in our bodies as well. So that is something that is quite interesting. That's why I've been kind of been a bit standoffish with colloidal silver, um, but and also for drinking water. But obviously, you know, silver is used in the bio uh, medical field and has been for a while. You would think there'd be some proof, uh, some proof, and some guidelines that would um, um, uh, set this. And this is what the next sentence is talking about that it's regulated by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, National Secondary Drinking Water Regulations. What do those regulations entail? I don't know. But anyway, it's a secondary maximum containment level in public water supplies is 0.1 milligram liter, which is a non-enforceable guideline based on possible cosmetic effects, such as skin discoloration. And that is what we've seen. You've heard the story of the guy who drank so much of it, he turned blue. Um, like the character <clears throat> from, um, uh, what's his name? The character from the X-Men. He turned blue when he, uh, um, you know, was part of that mutation. But this is, can cause it from discolorization. Uh, but also, if you have that much, how much of the good bacteria does it kill? And uh, so there is that guideline. And is there enough? You know, there's, there's, the, there's something in relation to colloidal silver, <clears throat> in a sense, as far as the parts per million. About silver is very little, but they were able to infuse it into the water and make it <clears throat> make it happen. I'd say probably if you do it at a um, uh, conservative amount, uh, you can't harm yourself, but then will it be enough to cause benefits to kill the good bacteria and or to kill the bad bacteria, which is what you want, but you also don't want to kill the good bacteria. Now, most of the good bacteria is what your body produces um, in your gut, in your stomach. And that's kind of what I'm talking about in ingestion in that regard. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it is quite interesting and fascinating. <clears throat> I want to thank CyberCurrent Twitcher for sending this along to me. And speaking of CyberCurrent Twitcher, most of you are aware that he is the inventor of the famous CCT uh, coin slide, which many of us in this community have acquired one way or, the, or, or another. And, uh, it's great. It's a great product here that he's perfected in his version two of this, and this is he's uh, been um, uh, featured on this website, Antique Sage, uh, and this is quite an interesting read uh, about the CCT coin slide. The CCT silver slide is a uh, is quite a fascinating invention here, and um, so ch- check this out. This is very cool. One of the quirks of alternative investing is that you end up researching some pretty strange things. Although I wouldn't call this strange, I would call it quite inventive. For example, the author recently embarked on a silver bullion buying spree. But this isn't the unusual part of my story. The weird part is that I stumbled upon 
When I looked for a simple and reliable silver counterfeit detection method, I discovered a device called the CCT Silver Slide. Yes, indeed. So what is the CCT Silver Slide? It is a quick and easy way to test silver bars and coins for fakes or counterfeits. The bullion market has been hit by an absolute flood of counterfeit Chinese silver coins and bars over the past decade. The worst part of this plague is that China's manufacturing prowess has allowed it to make increasingly sophisticated fakes, some of which are impossible to distinguish from genuine pieces by looks alone. <clears throat> Almost every bullion piece you can imagine has been imitated by the Chinese which is why I think it's a good thing we're taking them on in, the, in this trade war, uh, including very popular products such as American Silver Eagles, Australian Perth Mint products, and Sunshine Minting Silver Bars. So having an effective way to weed out the counterfeit silver is absolutely vital for the precious metal stacker. So how does it work? It works on the twin principles of diamagnetism, diamagnetism and electrical conductivity. These create an effect known as the eddy current break. If you place a very strong magnet in an inclined silver surface, it will only slide down it very slowly. Likewise, a silver coin placed on a large inclined magnet will slide quite slowly. Most other metals will not behave this way, even if they are plated with a layer of pure silver. Ferrous metals will stick to the magnet, while Cooper nickel, brass, and zinc alloys will descend quickly with little or no hesitation. And this is a, a, a video for the original slide and how to spot, spot, spot fake silver with magnetic slide. And uh, I will say that one of the beautiful things about the CCT coin slide is it has a fixed angle. So it makes comparing with other metals quite easy to do. <clears throat> so the story begins... Um, when uh, the author began expanding silver holdings, and we thought it was buying from reputable dealers, I soon realized it was, would be wise to spend some money on diagnostic equipment. Once I discovered the simplicity and usefulness of the CCT silver slide, I knew I had to have one. Not only that, but they're crafted very well. Uh, this is where things got interesting. CCT is an acronym which stands for Cyber Curtain Twitcher, a pseudonym for a gentleman silver stacker who resides in the United Kingdom. This colorful man has an unusual YouTube channel, and great YouTube channel, I might add, where he and his assistant, Igor, torture and destroy counterfeit coins in a myriad of gruesome ways. It's quite entertaining. I found this quirky brand of humor to be quite entertaining. CT, CCT is a personal creator of each and every one of his eponymous silver slides. Yes, there are other silver slides currently in the market. I've only seen like one other. It was a, seemed like a fake imitation. But to the best of my knowledge, CCT was the first person to conceive of the silver slide idea as a simple, non-destructive testing method to distinguish fake silver coins from genuine ones. He also constructs his slides to much higher standards than his competitors, which is obvious if you read through the build quality section further down the article. And uh, the original CCT silver slide has no dedicated website or formal sales platform for his product. In addition, there was only one way to contact the man through the comments section of his YouTube channel. When I did, he informed me that the U.S. distribution of the slides is exclusively handled by an associate named Mr. Vegeta. All right, the mysterious Mr. Vegeta, who is actually not very mysterious at all. He quote, he's got a great channel as well, and most of us are, are aware of Mr. Vegeta. And at this point, uh, things began feeling a little cloak and dagger. Apparently, the only way to get in touch with Mr. Vegeta is through his YouTube channel comments. When I contacted him this way, Mr. Vegeta informed me that as soon as he received a slide shipment from CCT, he would post a video advertising them for sale. Just needed to post my comment requesting a slide below in one of the videos. Then the waiting ga game began. About a week later, Mr. Vegeta finally uploaded the video stating that some slides were available. Unfortunately, my YouTube notifications... Uh, didn't get pushed through, so I was a bit slow in discovering this. I rushed, and that's a problem with YouTube, as we are aware. Um, I rushed to Mr. Vegeta's YouTube channel and left my comment, only to discover that I was too late. All the slides have been sold out in the 24 hours since he had posted a video, so it's become quite popular. But he would not be denied. Mr. Vegeta offered to put me on a waiting list, a proposal that I readily agreed to. After waiting a couple more weeks, I received a notification letting me know that I had just gotten a few more silver slides in stock in my choice of oak, utile, or I think that's how you pronounce that, or, or 
eating bow hardwood at 80 bucks each on a first come first served basis and sent him the money via paypal when i found out if my preferred wood was still available in the desperate hope of shoving the cash into his hands i would obligate him to deliver me something luckily the utah wood version i wanted was still up for grabs utah otherwise known as sipo mahogany is an african tropical hardwood exported primarily from cameroon ghana and the congo it's a beautiful dark reddish utile is a beautiful dark reddish brown color with a pronounced grain pattern that looks like honduran mahogany this is because sipa mahogany is actually a distant relative of suenia true mahogany genius so it's a this goes on to talk more about the um, uh, the quality of the build and his second version which uh i've got is a it's um it seems to have more magnets in it and uh, it's it's just very well done and uh and it's just a wonderful product so contact cct if you want to get uh his slide and i'm going to put a, a a link to this article in the in the description of this video so you can check it out uh, for sure post your thoughts below i found it quite interesting i'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate share comment and finally subscribe